All right, so we're going to kick this off. So just let me know if you have any, any questions and we'll kind of just dialogue back and forth. But this right here is a Google Doc. And right now it's saved within Brad's account. But you can give this, you can give access to anybody that you want. And then you, do you know Google Docs pretty well? Yeah, I, I mean, I can work around any program you put in front of me. So it's easily shareable. It's automatically updated, so you never have to save it. If multiple people are working on it, you know, you can see them actually working it's live. on it. Yeah. It's live. And there's also good version control. And if you do have other people working for you, this is one of my favorite hacks. There's a ton of plugins that you can do. But, you know, I can notify. Brad can get notified when any changes are made. Oh, yeah. I can email him the daily digest, or I can email him right away. Right. I don't know if you're going to be using this, so I'm just going to give you the daily digest. So then, therefore, if you come in on Tuesday because you were surfing on Monday or whatever, you know, when you come in and you open up this doc, you start working on it, Brad will get notified. So then he can jump in there and collaborate with you. Or for me, I have people all over the world, and I grant them access to this. I take access away. I have, like, people on Fiverr, which is just a website. You can get stuff done for five bucks. I'll give them access to that, and then I get notified. And then there's also version control. So it's really powerful from that. Sorry, that's my phone. Just people barking at me. Um, so in this document, this is a digital marketing blueprint. So if you're going to build a house, you know, here are all the steps that you're going to need to follow. And here's how you're going to co collaborate. So think of it like Basecamp. Have you ever used Basecamp before? Have you ever used Slack before? Or Yammer? So Basecamp, Slack, and Yammer are these, I don't know, how would you describe them? They're just like Basecamp collaboration kind of like a, tools. Okay. Yeah, online office. Yeah, but so they're used by millions. projects and you have, a, we'll, we'll, maybe we might even, we should have a Basecamp. Yeah, Basecamp, and they're all dirt cheap. Yeah. But the, pro, the reason is you just don't use them on email. So us, for if it's in Basecamp, it gets done. Right. Like there's no, there's no avoiding it. It just has to get done, you know what I mean? It's like there. But if you send me an email, I'm not, you know, Brad sends me an email. I'm not opening it. <laughs> I'm just swinging it around. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So this is the blueprint. So we're not going to spend time on this, but this is your digital marketing system that we're going to walk through. And the idea is you set goals, you have a strategic approach, we do the tactical work, and then we have the KPIs. KPI is a key performance indicator. And we're obsessive about keeping track of that. So, you know, this is mostly centered around, you know, business and making money. So you know, on each one of these tabs are different, but here's kind of your success goals and you look at them on a yearly basis. So, you know, how many, you know, how much revenue do you want to do and, and how many leads is that, or, you know, how many interviews is that going to take? Whatever it is, you know, how many customers am I going to need? In other words, like how many get all these people? And then if I need to get these 30 interviews done, you know, 30, that's going to be like one a week. You know I mean? How am I going to do all that? So you just set up your, uh, your keys to success. You have your monthly dashboard. This gets pretty nerdy into, into marketing, but you know, you have traffic, traffic to your website. You have, you know, SEO, those are backlinks and authority. Then you have website, you know, the number of impressions, you know, all your key metrics in here, social we'll get into, and then, you know, conversion. So that, that's pretty, pretty nerdy. And you're not going to use all these tabs, uh, but then we're going to get into social media reach. And that goes back to what I said earlier. If you want to lose weight, just write down your weight every single day. You want to get better at surfing, you know, you got to surf two or three times a week. You want to play volleyball, you got to learn how to bump, you know what I mean? And you got to do it over and over again and then just keep track of it. So here on a monthly basis, you can see 2018, these are your real numbers for Civic Couch. So you have a social media reach of 16,888 because I added up all your LinkedIn connections, your Twitter followers, your Facebook uh, likes, your Instagram followers, and your YouTube subscribers. Now, each one of those are a different value, but we're going to get into each one of those platforms. And then also your email list. I don't, you know, and I don't know if it's a thousand, but these are all accurate numbers from yesterday. Ironically, back in 2004, Brad and I had the same meeting. That's funny. And his social media reach at that time was 7,567. 2004, that was what, four years ago? Yeah. Four years ago. So he's doubled in four years. Way, um, way more than doubled. And so that's good, but I would like to see yeah, a lot yeah, crazier right. in, this, in four years ago. Right. And then, you know, online reviews, not as applicable to your business, but we can also touch on that. But if you want to you know, build your reputation, you know, it's, it's Yelp and Google local businesses and Facebook reviews, especially if you're a local business. So for instance, Manhattan Toyota, they got to keep track of their online reviews. They got to be asking. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> 
So you can see every single month and then you just graph it. It automatically graphs. But, you know, all of our clients, they look like this. It's not a hockey stick. We can make it look like a hockey stick. Yeah. But it's, it's slow and steady growth in terms of their social media reach. And the idea is if the client or you are producing great content, which is not the discussion that we're having today, we assume that everything that you produce can be great. This is all your syndication where you're going to get the views and where you're going to get the comments and the likes and where stuff is just going to grow organic. So this is just keeping track of your social media reach. Any questions on that? So let's just go through it, the tabs in order. You can always switch up the tabs. So if we're to grow reach, we need to know who we want to tackle. So you want to build a couple of different personas. Now in marketing, a persona is your ideal customer. So if the phone's going to ring, that's who you want to be talking to. Those are people that are calling about a specific car that you have on the lot. So we're, we're talking about civic couch. So we're, let's just go through your personas. The first one would be maybe the 25 year old and he's a male. He's in the industry of, you know, marketing and advertising you know, titles are really important because we're going to find him on LinkedIn and he might be working over at Snapchat, Snapchat, and he bought a house here. Um, psycho, psychographic descriptions, you know, what, what does he say? Who does he hang out with? Um, you know, what are search terms? You know, where does he hang out with online? You know, he's probably not going to be a, a heavy LinkedIn user, you know, but he's going to be on Snapchat. He's going to have a Twitter account for sure especially if he's in the tech industry, because there's a lot of people down here who work at Snapchat and Facebook and Google, and that whole area is growing, and those people like to live down here in the South Bay. So that might be one persona. Second persona is, you know, we can just make all this shit up, but you need to know this. And then if you're going to have somebody doing outreach for you, because we're talking about outreach and syndication, they're going to be going after a specific persona. And another persona for a specific couch is going to be the 40 to 60-year-old male in the South Bay who's into beach life, who works locally, who, you know, probably reads the beach reporter maybe, right. you know, he's going to be on LinkedIn because he's probably a business guy. And if you can afford to live in Hermosa and Manhattan and own a home, you know, he's going to be on LinkedIn. So you just build out these personas um, and, you know, you can go into great depth or you can just keep them really high level or just know in the back of your head that you have personas. The next thing gets involved with uh, what's called SEO. And you want to have a profile built on every single one of these platforms. And you want to have it claimed with your own username and password and URL. So I put some of Brad's in here. And so there's about 150 on this sheet. And I don't care if you're selling cars or if you're Civic Couch or if you're a, a single person consultant, to have relevance on Google and to come up and search, which I can show you many examples, right now if you search Civic Couch, my stuff comes up, because I kind of hack Brad, Brad a little bit. <laughs> Do you Thank know you. if you search Civic Couch, I come up? No, I didn't know that. So, how do I open up a tab here? See the plus? Let's just do an example. Is this a search engine here? Uh, well, that's gonna that's gonna pull up my email. There you go. Then go couch. See how you see it. I got a top one is video production services in the Hand Beach, and it's a plumbing truck. Yeah, that's my stuff. <laughs> I, I put that there. And by the way, I did it legitimately. Right. So I said I hired Brad to do a photo shoot for one of my clients. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's what the it from. came that's right. out awesome. He did a phenomenal job. I highly recommend Brad for video. Check out some of his work on my website. Right. Or on the, the Courtesy Plumbing website. Right. So that's been up there for a long time. So Amazing. that's just an example of why you need to go in and claim that and why you should have reviews right. and why you have a username and password because now Brad can go into his Google local business account, which you'll see that's the number one profile that you need to create. By the way, it's a lot of work, but you don't have a choice. Right. So now he can go in there and say, take this video off my crap and put your video up there. And by the way, that spot right there on Google for the brand name, they want videos in there like every day of your business. Mm -hmm. So again, back to syndication, which we'll talk about. 
But after you have the username and password, and you can pay a guy on Fiverr to do this, or you can pay my nephew. But here you can see these are just local business directories, and you're like, I'm not a local business, I'm global. It doesn't matter. You still have a physical address. Google still sees you as a business. Even if you do work virtual, like, like Amazon or whatever, if you're a virtual consultant, you still have an office. Google still needs to know who you are, what you do, and how you do it. Right. If you're going to rank for anything on the planet, and everybody wants to rank for something. Um, so then, so you fill out all these, you get your username and password. Uh, here are some of Brad's social media profiles. So his Twitter, his Facebook. Uh, right now, or I didn't put in his LinkedIn, uh, but he doesn't have a LinkedIn business account. And these are non-negotiables. If you're a business and if you exist, you need to have each and every single one of these filled out. And then you get into social bookmarking, so Dig and Delicious and StumbleUpon and Reddit and SlideShare and Visually and Tumblr. So you can set up accounts for all those guys. You don't have a choice. You I didn't know you to. could. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then if we get into some of the video sites, YouTube, Vimeo, MetaCafe, Dailymotion, Tumblr. And if you do an article on, if you do a Google search and where can I post my video, you know, the internet yeah. will tell you, hey, yeah. here are the top 10 places to post your video. And if you have a video, you want to post in those 10 places. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But when you have content, because again, you're in the content creation business, every single one of these 150 sites are a social network. So if you want to get the most amount of views for your YouTube video, as soon as it goes live, you go to Google local business. They want you to post videos. There's a huge button there that says post. Um, you go to... MSN and Yahoo, you go to your Yelp pro profile. I'm not sure if you have a Yelp profile, but these guys need a Yelp profile. A paid Yelp profile. Preferably, they have, yeah. yeah, a paid Yelp they profile. They do. Just to get those ads off of your, your page. And we can go into depth on each one of these, but today's meeting, we're just gonna talk about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. But you can imagine that you can post it out onto your Yelp page. You can post it to your patch.com, super pages, Craigslist, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Thumbtack. This is just, the, the YouTube link, correct? We're not uploading it to every single one of these. Well, whatever you're promoting. So you well, might we, be promoting. We were saying we want to do the YouTube, right? Is that what? Yeah, so YouTube is probably, you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the importance of each channel. Okay. But the ideal scenario is you're promoting the video on a page of your website. And it would be a page dedicated to that. Or, you know, I mean, for Civic Couch, it might be different. But if it's Manhattan Beach, Toyota, and say you shot an awesome video of like comedians in cars or Brad in cars or <laughs> JP in cars or, or drinking soda, um, you know, ideally for them being a local business, you would create a page of your website, call it a blog post. They had, yeah, they, they did yeah. that for us. And then what you would do, rather than promoting YouTube or promoting Facebook, you know, you would take that particular page, which has its own URL, and you want to get visitors to it. You'll be badass if actually we, if our page, whatever, just dedicate, I was going to put that, unless you want. No, no, I got mine right here, sorry. Um, is if that page was getting more, or right up there with their pages. Like if we were promoting that video page so much that it was getting equal coverage as their, as their cars were. We could yeah. go to them and go, hey, look. This and by is the stats. way, if you want to promote it, you look at your Google Analytics. Right. And I guarantee if you create that video today, you put that video up, and you post that a link to that video, and you give it a good title, description, and keywords, which are the SEO factors, like best used car company or best car company or whatever your keywords are. I don't know the car business at all. And then you promote that page on every single one of these platforms, going all the way down this list, you know, you're going to get you're gonna get views. You're going to get views. You need people to yeah. come to that page. And then you remarket the little shit out of them. Are the videos still going to be based in YouTube and then shared? On or the they going to be hosted? Yeah. It's going to be hosted on YouTube. Right. And it's going to be embedded, embedded. on your page. Okay. Yeah. I just so want to make all sure. All of those view credits are so, going back to your YouTube but channel. But even if you're posting on Vimeo and Tumblr and all that, you have to dedicate a whole new upload to those, right? Yes, yep, exactly. And like even Facebook, you wanna uh, do a direct upload, but for more information, you link back to that page mm -hmm. on your website, which also has the video. And that's the only video you want is the same view on your YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so we're not talking too much about content. We're talking more about promotion and syndication. Yeah. Okay. But that's that's a good good question. But these are all your platforms, and you have the username and the password and the URL. So if you're working with me, I'm you know we're we're updating this. So we do all this in the first week of a, of a project. Mm -hmm. Brad produces the video, and then Brad sends us an email and says, we'll "Go." For the video. So then we got to go to every single one of these sites. And it's already optimized. So we don't have to do any creation. We just have to put a link in there and then kind of like a little snippet. Snippet is a, is a, is a tweet. Mm -hmm. So you keep track of all this. It's in the doc. Whether you're working on it or Brad's working on it, you know, this is our syndication process. All right, so we're moving on. Keywords and hashtags. You need, you need your keywords. You need to know how much search volume there is for them. And you understand what keywords and hashtags are. Pretty simple. Wait, so how do, does, do you know how to find out what a good keyword is? That's kind of important. Yeah, you look at your Google Analytics, you look at your webmaster tools, you do some research, you do some common sense, you look at the top related hashtags, you, know, you just have to know. You run Google Ads, you, you know what I mean? There's you need to know your business. How does he you know his business? You gotta figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but, but like let's say the video I posted today, uh, the interview I have with Chris Bredesen. So he owns, you know, uh, he owns a couple restaurants, Rockefellers and uh, Captain Kids. How would we Check know out this interview of Chris Breederson, owner of right. Rockefellers. So you're optimizing for Rockefellers and his name. Because Captain Kids is, I think, bigger uh, as long as, as far as the following. So we have that with Rockefeller and, and Captain Kids. And then those, so are, you think our keywords would be stuff like, like that? I mean, it would be. It, it's whatever Google suggests. You run ads in Google AdWords to get your, your keywords. You have to know what your is business. That? Run an ad in Google AdWords. So you go up to your AdWords account. Those are those little ads that show up. You know what AdWords is? Pay-per-click? Uh, yes, pay-per-click. Yeah, so if you just go to, what's his name? Breederson, Breederson Chris Breederson. Oh, Chris Breederson. Uh, B-R-E-D. I-S. And you use those big old chunky no, keys. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get the Google Suggest, so don't type in the full name, go slow. Right. So, See the Google suggest right here? Yes. So get close to his name. So nothing really comes up. Um, but right, it's right, right there. Yeah. Second one down. So that, that's his name. So nothing really is coming up under Google suggest. What, what's his most popular restaurant? Captain Kids. No. So we're going to rank for his Rock name. Feller. Captain Kids has a bigger following. Like on social media. I don't know if that means it. There's more dollars behind. Uh... K I D D I U. So buffet and so Captain Kids Fish Mart restaurant. Yeah. So when you use the keyword around Google Suggest, you know, people aren't lazy. Okay. They're gonna they're gonna click that plus. Oh. That's how Google already knows that. That makes so sense. Because that's exactly what I do too. Yeah. I click on whatever they so suggest. Suggest is just one way to figure out. Right. But as I do Captain Kids and I hit enter, these are ads actually. Usually the oh, first by the top way, two are paid. Just do Manhattan Beach. So these are, why am I not even getting any ads? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's always two. Oh, so, there, yeah. Well, this is actually Google, Google Local, um, which I, I do. But here, here are the ads. So this is what you set up for your business. And as people search, you know, a keyword Google tells you. He took over his computer with plumbing. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> now all your Facebook is going to pop up ads. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but basically, it doesn't matter how you figure it out, but you need to know your business. And you need to know what people are searching for. And your Google Analytics tells you what people are searching for. You know, your Facebook, you know, your YouTube page tells you the exact keyword that people are using that is showing the videos. Uh, I can show you within your YouTube account. Uh, that's just YouTube analytics, but we're not gonna get to that right now. Oh, okay, oh, okay. I see. So we're I'm still just trying to that. get, I mean, I'm just trying to get, get through this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so keywords and hashtags, you can, you can find this information on anywhere and everywhere, but you gotta know it. And that's just where you put it. So if I am gonna use a hashtag, I just come here. Oh, and so in my Instagram, have all your... I already have all my hashtags. I and it's Manhattan Beach, Hermosa, El Segundo, hashtag, right. you know, top video, surfing, uh, El Porto. Right. El Porto's a good one. Yeah. Because surfers are like smart. They're like, hey, if I search El Porto, I know I'm going to get good right. stuff. 
Um, and then what you do is you have your evergreen posts. We're just going to move through this real quick. But evergreen posts, there's no reason why Brad's post two years ago of a kick-ass surfing video can't go out on Twitter today. So you automate all this. You use a cool tool called Hootsuite. And then you also auto-populate this. So if we tweet, it's got to go here. And then put the link in here so it's evergreen. So all my posts, they're just popping right in here. By the way, Google Docs, all this can be, you know, kind of work together. So if somebody subscribes to my newsletter, I want it to pop in here because they're, they're top influence. Anyway, we automate all, a lot of this. Uh, and then you get to your content. There's three forms of content. There's top of the level, you know, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. You can go through that. Uh, here's where we, we do a lot of this work. So if you're to create content, you have a content marketing strategy. So you're going to blog every day if you want. We'll go through and we'll, opt to, uh, we'll, we'll figure out what campaign it is, which keyword we're targeting. So it could be Manhattan Beach surfing. Uh, we'll write the title for it, which is Manhattan Beach surfing video, which obviously there's shitloads of people searching for a Manhattan Beach surfing video every single day. Mm -hmm. I guarantee there's over 100 searches. So if I get to the top of that page, with that particular blog post, I'm just gonna be flowing traffic every single day. More on Saturdays and Sundays, and Mondays and maybe not as much, but come Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single week until somebody is smart enough to bump me off with, I'm Google for that, I'm getting that search volume. Mm. And by the way, it's not only gonna be, it's not gonna be local people, it's gonna be like people from around the world. Anyway, so then you write the description, the H1, the H2, and then a call to action. Like, hey, if you like this video, here's five more. Always have a call to action. So we write this thousands, uh, not, no, not thousands, but we'll do like a hundred of these and we write them in advance. And then we'll schedule them within auto, uh, within our WordPress. And so I can show you crap like this. And then the reason why you do it like this and H1, do you know what an H1 is? No. So I'll just do a quick sketch. Yeah. 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 So... Just a quick sketch like this. This is uh, the, 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 the title, meta title, never appears on the page. It appears in the browser. So see Brad Jacobson Instagram photos? Mm -hmm. So that's the title, and then you have the description and the keywords. This is all your meta title, never appears on the page, and then here's the page. And then so you always want to give it a H1. That's the heading. And newspapers are set up the same way. And then you have like a little paragraph here. Then you have, you know, a picture, and then, you know, the, a video, and then you have uh, an, an H2 here which is just a heading two, and WordPress does all this for you. A little paragraph, and then you know how you have an H3 and then a CTA. So every page on the internet is pretty much set up like this. And these headings are what attract you. Think about it like a magazine. Like if you go to a magazine, you know, you go down to a, uh, um, you know, uh, like a magazine store, a yeah. newsstand. Just the layout. Yeah, and those people are writing five words on the cover of that magazine, and a good hack when you're when you're doing this is go to magazine.com and it can be cosmopolitan right sure i write sex on every page yeah <laughs> hey, by the way that's a great one yeah. sexy surf videos oh Dude, yeah. you got it <laughs> that's like, like if that's your headline <laughs> and that's what appears in google when i type in manhattan beach sexy surf videos or right. you gotta kind of put them together but every industry has a magazine. So there's like 15 plumbing magazines. And those people that write for Men's Health and Surfing Magazine, uh, they get paid shitloads of money to come up with those five words every single month, which are gonna attract our eye. Right. So don't ever think on, in marketing, just steal whatever anybody else has produced. So this is really important for, for business, just have a content strategy and that, that you know, it can be all produced. Uh, then you post it live. Uh, then you can get into competitive analysis. This is just the last piece, which is important to you. And then you can obviously give yourself a scorecard. Uh, but I was telling Brad this. You need 10 influential community members. And you need to list their name, their first name, last name, company, email, phone, clout score, Twitter handle, LinkedIn handle, Facebook page, Google page, Pinterest. Obviously, Pinterest is not that important. But you can throw up Instagram in there. These 10 people are when you launch a good video. Not a shitty one, but a good one, because you have to also produce shitty ones. Right. Fill up. Keep going. Yes. You just text these people, and you put them on a group text. We, we talked about it. Uh, yeah, unless they're an Android. an Android, which doesn't work. <laughs> um, but you're like, hey, guys. You I can group text on Android. 
not from my phone. He was telling me I didn't you know. You can this. only do it. I think it's up to eight people, and then after uh, that, iPhone to iPhone to iPhone works. But if you're going iPhone to Android and it's over eight people, it doesn't go through. Bastards. Uh, iPhone's trying to yeah, buy me an iPhone. <laughs> But this is the most no, important. No, you don't want one. You want an Android, so you can get to everybody. Yeah, you can get to everybody. Mine get to everybody. Oh, so mine will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Android to iPhone works no problem. Yeah. But iPhone, iPhone and Android. Android. But basically, this is the number one thing that Civic Couch needs and also uh, Toyota is just 10 people. Not 11, not 12, not 15, just 10 people. And be like, the email, you should have it stored in, your, in you know, as a draft in your email. And be like, guys, I just launched. Can you give it a hit? or give it a hit or like or whatever. But then you just send them to one spot, whether it be the YouTube video. So for Civic Couch, it's probably a YouTube video where you want to get those likes. But then they know because you're friends with them and you like them and they trust you and you know, you're just helping push it along. So it's, it's called a collab. Um, or, or like the reason why the, the YouTubers have done so well is there's like 50 of them that are in this elite group and they all just look out for each other's back. And they all just repost it, other people's stuff, and they like it, and they share it, and they comment on it. So, and that's how you're going to get the most amount of views. Yeah, is, and by the way, you can put me up there. I, you know, I mean, I got a following, which I'll, I'll like it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the internet anyway. I'm on my phone anyway. If you send me a text message, and it says, you know, like this video, I'm going to like it. As long and as vice versa, they would text us and say, hey, Civic Culture, man, I meet Toyota, can you go and... But it, it can't be anybody that doesn't have a big follower. Right. They need to be influential. And that's why it's influential because who cares if they have 20 Twitter followers? I can pick up the phone and call 20 people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to help. But that's like anytime you, know, you post to Facebook and you get you know, 10 comments and then 20 comments and 30 comments. Right. And next thing you know, it's like 75,000 comments. Um, so any questions on this doc? It's just a management document that you use to update on a regular basis. It seems like a lot. But you can imagine that if you have goals, you know who you're targeting, you know how to target them, you know where they are, you know your hashtags and your keywords, you know what they're searching, and you have all this content to share with them, and then you have a team of people that's also pushing it out, there's, there's no way that you would not be able to be successful if you do the work. But if you don't do it or if you miss a piece, you're not going to be successful. Does that make sense? That's is it overwhelming? No, nope. it's just work. Yep. So then we're going to cover the five major platforms. But again, we're not only working with five platforms, we're working with all those platforms. But, you know, you got to prioritize. So, and the goal here is to grow your social media reach. So Brad right here has, did I hit the record button? Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right. We're going to speed through this. Um, Oh yeah, it says stop the share. Yeah, stop recording. All right, so we're 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 uh, we're still referring here. So right now we're logged in Brad's account. You can see that he has a following of <laughs> three hundred and nine people. Should we call them all? <laughs> <laughs> That's just clear. Yeah. Uh, so each one of these five platforms, we all talk about them every single day. They're on the news. You know, they're they're really really popular. So to increase that amount of following, we know that Brad is a hyper local company, just like the Toyota dealership. Where's the pound sign? So we want to connect with people in Manhattan Beach. And by the way, all I did was type in, so again, suggest, don't right. think too hard. I haven't typed in anything yet. I just typed in the word, the, the, the hashtag. And guess what came up? Manhattan Beach, how do they know? And South Bay and Beach Life. And I don't know what that last one is. But, you know, take these hashtags and put them into our Google Docs. And then, therefore, we just have them. We can cut and paste them in the future. But here are all the, the people that are associated with Manhattan Beach. And the goal with Twitter is we're not paying. This is all non-paid. This is all organic. We're hacking the system. We want to follow everybody who's talking about Manhattan Beach because they're going to be like, who are these guys? I've never heard of them before. They go and they're like, oh, shit, these guys produce videos. Oh, my God. That's freaking awesome. I love that. I'm going to like them. I'm going to subscribe to them. Hey, I'm going to go over to YouTube and watch that. Next thing you know, they waste an hour of their life on City Couch <laughs> because, because they use the hashtag <laughs> Manhattan Beach. But if we're not, and by the way, we, and one, one thing that 
is you always have to be putting putting content out there. So anytime you're doing your social media, you gotta make sure that you you tweeted. Yeah, recently. I, I, I'm gonna have to go through and fix this, fix my profile first, and then I'll. So, go oh, not bad. So we we tweeted October twentieth. So right, which well, that, it's connected to my uh, Facebook. Yep. So we did tweet, but if we're gonna go in here and and follow a hundred people, then we have to yeah, uh, yeah, make sure we have some new, fresh, relevant content. Um, but if we go back to, hey, you know, I need a thousand people on this account like yesterday. Right. So, and again, that's what we're being held, held accountable for. So, you know, obviously we should follow at Manhattan Beach. You know, we're following the easy reader. And if we want to follow people that are all using the hashtag Manhattan Beach, we can just go through follow, follow, Max follow, 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 follow. Follow, and we don't know if they're in Manhattan. These are all Dodgers. Why are the Dodger people using that? Are you, oh, that's weird. Because everybody's posting Dodger pictures lately. Walker, Beaver. yeah, I don't know why they're all Dodgers. They're all Dodger huh. players. But you can also go to. Uh, yeah, I live here. Usually, the suggestions are pretty good too, so you can kind of go through each one of these profiles. And if you do find one, wait, because you keep getting the Dodgers. Don't don't keep following. Them, so <laughs> don't. They're not going to follow back anyway. Um, but here. <laughs> Would be an example but of, then people see that you started following them and they want to follow you right because mm -hmm. i get follows from stuff like that yeah. so all we're going to do is is try to find the most relevant people utilizing search you can use google search you can use twitter suggest or you can just find a good account whereas you would figure that all the people that are following the easy reader right. fit okay. that target market persona target. Right. so we could go to an account like that or if you stumble upon an account like at manhattan beach you know, you can assume that these people are following that account. Right. This is not a good account because they've never tweeted before. How do you know that? Because there's no uh, tweets. Because there's no, there's oh, no tweets. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. But, you know, I mean, we know Charlie. You know, we can go down this. And I'm not suggesting looking at the account and being like, oh, this, you're interested in ice cream. Oh, you should follow them. It's like, no, follow, 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 follow. And then you go back through and then you get rid of them after it's not followed you back? Yeah, and if they don't follow you back after, you know, Couple weeks, give them a couple weeks. That's a process. <laughs> no, but there's tools to do all of this. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just use a, a Twitter tool and just say, you know, unfollow, unfollow the, these these people, follow, people unfollow follow. the people that aren't following me back. Oh. Yeah. No, I sure. can't find that on Instagram at all. Uh, Instagram's a little bit harder. I have to go in and then have to go to their friends and then have to search myself on their friends on their follow yeah. list. So your your uh, your metrics might be a little squirrely and people might look at that and they'll look at your profile and be like, Oh man, Brad is following, you know, 6,000 and he only has a thousand right. followers. Sorry. Who gives a flying shit? What is Brad a good marketer? You tell it, tell him that one again. No, I, I, I won't follow people that do that. Yeah. So you but I'm the one off. Follow. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the one off. Cause yeah. if I see someone that has, but guess who's looking I know at your doing. profile. Yeah. Who's looking at your Twitter profile? Somebody trying to sell you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise no one gives a shit. That's and they only care about themselves. And is somebody not going to follow me? I'm, giving, I'm, I'm looking for 50,000 Twitter followers. Right, right. I'm not looking for, for 300. We're doing quantity versus right. quality, and we're playing the numbers game. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do want to unfollow those people, just go to unfollow.com. That's what it is, unfollow.com? I'm pretty sure. But I'll just yeah, write that down. And if uh, <laughs> unfollow is free if you tweet about them. Okay. okay. So tweet to unfollow 100. And then so we just tweet yeah. 25 times and then you can go in and delete the tweets or not care. <laughs> because, okay, am I going to follow Brad? Let's see what he tweeted about six months ago. Right. Oh, he tweeted about unfollow. Like no one cares about you. They only care about themselves. But you know what I mean? If you're posting videos and you're doing videos and, and, and I have Twitter on my phone and I already follow you on, on uh, Instagram or I, I'm deleting my Facebook account, I still want Civic Couch. You know, I'll, I'll use my, my Twitter platform. And by the way, all you're doing is you're tweeting to tell Google that if somebody searches for Manhattan Beach sexy surf videos, I'm number one because I have a page for it. I tweet about it. Because uh, every one of those platforms is in Google and it's kind of like a search analytic, or not analytic, but a, a keyword, right? Yeah. So they're all putting out results saying Google's looking for this term 
and then somebody on Twitter used it, somebody on here, 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 they all used it. Exactly. So I'll go back to plumbing and then, then we got to move on. Uh, but if you search for a plumber in Manhattan Beach, Google is looking through its entire index of all of the plumbers that I think service Manhattan Beach, and then they're saying, Google's doing all this internally, algorithmically. Google's asking itself, well, which plumbing company has the most modern reviews? Which company talks about Manhattan Beach? Which, which company's been in business for a while? In other words, they, they've had a website for a while, it's just not a brand new website. You know, which company has a page dedicated to Manhattan Beach? Which company has updated new content on their website about doing plumbing service in Manhattan Beach? And which company is active on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube? And which company has all of the profiles playing? Yeah. Google does that in 0 .023 seconds, and then they deliver the result. And by the way, if it's my page and I update, I talk about Manhattan Beach, I have every single profile, I've done three videos on it, I tweet, I Instagram, I own that search result. And for somebody to come around, and I'm gonna get that phone call especially if I'm doing paid ads and I'm listed in the maps and I have online reviews, my Yelp profile is there. So if you follow that marketing, you know, you can own the term Manhattan Beach and it's yours to own until somebody comes along and, and knocks you out. So that's how you essentially get Twitter followers. You just find good accounts. Like for instance, the easy reader or how about this one right here? Like Skechers peer to peer walk or is that peer to peer? Yeah, peer, -to -peer. No, peer to peer. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like P E R. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but here you go. Like you know. So then. Yesterday. Yeah. So then you you go through the profile and you, you you know a lot of times you can see who's retweeted it. So if they've retweeted it, or on Instagram, if you're going through the profile, this particular profile, you know that our target market's at this event. And when you go through this and you see that. You know, Bobby, Joe, Dave, Mike, and Phil have all liked it, shared it, and tweeted. Well, we want to follow them, the Dave, Mike, Phil, all the people that are commenting on they're this. Active, right. Because they're active. They have an account. Well, we know that they have an account. You know, I'm just using Instagram because, all right, so I, I could use this, but it's just not a, not a big account. So here I can see, I, I can see the people who have retweeted this or the people who have liked this. But on Instagram, you can definitely see those people. Right. And then you want to follow those people because, you know, these guys posted two hours ago. Those people are there. We're live. You know, we're, we're here. You right. know, and I don't say message. I'm just saying follow, 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 follow. And then if we're doing marketing for Brad, I know he doesn't want me. He's probably getting uh, all nervous that I'm just going to follow these random people. But if they're involved in this. But no, our page isn't ready. <laughs> I know. Right? But it doesn't really matter. Do we really care if Jacqueline just got a message on her phone? Brad from Civic Couch wants to follow her. But you get the idea. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I jumped into Twitter is because it's very similar process. So our school of, of thought is we follow the, the three E process, which you have to be entertaining, engaging, and every day. <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> educating, and engaging. So it's gotta be one of those three. Um, so you have to go in there, post something, make sure the profile is up to date. Then you have all of your tweets that you've done before, so you can always post that. Then you go in and, and like a bunch of stuff, like or comment, but you don't really have to comment, and then you follow 100 people, and you're done for the day. All that has to take place in about five or 10 minutes, because you already have everything built. So now you're done with Twitter in, in five or 10 minutes, and you can move on to your next account. So your social media should never take more than an hour a day or an hour per week. If you, Wait, per uh, day per or account, a week? Per, per business? No, you should do all your social media. If you're going to do it daily, it should be done in, in an hour. Per business or? Per, per business. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, uh, or, or like you're saying, if you do it on the weekend, if you do it on one day, that's what you mean by per week. So you, you just post. You right? can, yeah, you're talking you can about? post. Or I'm talking post. about growing your reach. Right. Until it sets itself in motion. Yeah. We it never sets itself in motion. No. It just grows, 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 okay. grows, and gets bigger. Okay, this month we did 10%. Next month, let's do 12%. Let's do 20%. Let's do 50%. Because celebrities are still pumping their, pumping their marketing machines, yeah. Yes. So on Twitter, it should be, you know, 10 minutes, you, you jump in. Well, this is LinkedIn. But you jump in there, and you follow 100 people. Now, on Twitter, you're only going to get about 5 to 10%, if you're lucky, of people following you back. 
And it, so it varies on, on different platforms. We're gonna jump into LinkedIn right now. We're gonna go through it real quick. But on LinkedIn, of all of the connections, connections are the same as followers. Do you know LinkedIn pretty well? So LinkedIn, all, they're called connections, they're the same thing. 65 to 70% will accept your LinkedIn connection. Because of the whole business style. Of it. The business style, you know, you're gonna have a good profile. Brad knows everybody, you know. So if you're in Manhattan Beach and Brad from Civic Couch, Sends you. Yeah, but I got But I, I need to get a Civic Couch account, right? Because we're not. There's no reason to boost up my personal account. Yes, you do want to boost up your personal account. So the way that LinkedIn works is similar to Facebook, whereas you have a profile right. and then you have a business account. Right. Your business account is the same thing as like a Facebook page, where you have all your employees right. in there, okay. and you know you can post there and you can upload video. Um, but every single business has an owner. So you're the owner of Civic, Civic Couch. You're the person behind it. You're the voice of the company, right. whether it's your you know, voice or whether we're posting it for you. Right. So the common theme here is anytime you go in and you're going to do LinkedIn marketing, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to throw up a video, throw up your YouTube channel, throw up a, a post, throw up anything. Would we, would we put the video in here or would we go with the YouTube account? Right now, the fact that you have 478 connections, I would just do a post. So I would just share YouTube, have, my YouTube post. Yeah, so okay. you can throw up the YouTube post or whatever you're promoting. Um, you know, but if you're promoting a page of your website or you did a new video or whatever you know, you're promoting at that time, it's gotta go in here. And usually you have one good call to action. So here you can write an article, upload a video, same thing with all platforms. This is just the home screen. Got it? Yeah. So on LinkedIn, I'm not going to get into the details on the platform, but you know, if you're a real estate agent, you know, your goal would be to connect with high network individuals right. that live here in the South Bay. And a high network individuals is a CFO, a CIO, a CEO who's here in Manhattan Beach. So again, we just want to build a profile. First thing you want to do is, is go in and accept because again, we're doing the numbers thing because we're just using this as like a news, we're, we're a newspaper. We're just doing syndication of our newspaper. And if you're gonna choose 10 houses to deliver it to, then you're only gonna get 10 readers. So our goal is to be everyone. So the first thing you wanna do is go in and accept your LinkedIn invite. So Brad has 24 here, you can click on manage all or just go in and accept them. We don't care. They're probably all Manhattan Beach real estate agents anyway. <laughs> They really are. They are. That's all yeah. they are. It's just all real estate agents. <laughs> hey, they watch but videos. They, they watch videos. videos. They watch videos. They probably watch they're, a lot of videos. They talk to a lot of people. Because they're sitting here like this. Any prospects around here? <laughs> they so talk to a lot of people. They're down at the beach. They're networking. So they're they're one of our target market personas. Sure. So again, when we go back to building that, hey, let's target the 40-year-old guy who's a real estate agent who uh, has a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, he's doing real, yeah, he's doing real he's estate. He's actually selling stuff at real yeah. estate and not so just, just, just go in and accept. We don't care who they are. They're head of production. You know, this guy's up in Fox Sports. You know, he's friends with Joe, Joe, Joe Charles and you know Joe, right? Yeah, G.I. Yeah. Joe. <laughs> G.I. Joe. Uh, and then we want to build our network because we just posted something. Um, and I'll give you one caveat as we go ahead and build the network here. LinkedIn, every single one of your connections you, have, you, can, you can export their email address. So Brad That's has right. 478. We can take those 478 people. Put it on a spreadsheet. Yes, sorry, I blew my mouth. Um, so we have 478 real email addresses of LinkedIn users. So as we grow this platform, we gotta get Brad to 10,000 real quick. And we're, I'll show you how he's gonna get to 10,000 real quick. Then we take those email addresses, they're all Manhattan Beach real estate agents, right? Just use that as an example. Those real estate agents are also on Twitter. They're also in Instagram. They're also on Facebook. Plus, eh, we can throw them on our email list too. So the first thing when you sign up for Twitter, are you allowed like, to throw them on our email list? Yeah, I do. Okay. Or without you? Yeah. Okay. You can you can email anybody you want okay. once. Yeah. And they have the choice to yeah. unsubscribe. And as long as you have a uh, valid address, you can email anybody. Okay. Um, but it's like making a phone call. Yeah. Exactly. Plus, people are too lazy to unsubscribe anyway. When's the last time you unsubscribe? I'm good at it. Are you? Oh, yeah. I fucking chop, 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 chop. Chop, chop, <laughs> sorry. You probably chop me because if you're on my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So you can get their email address. And when you go to Twitter, they're like, tell us who you know. Or uh, Facebook is like, oh, find friends. Give me your address book. Right. And then you put all of them into your Google account. And then you connect all of those platforms Shit, to your that's, address book. That's smart. And you can also run ads to these people because when you sign up for an ad on Facebook to promote your video, you're, you're like, tell us, who, tell us your friends. Right. And, uh, huh. and so now we're cross promoting. Right. So when Brad's walking down the street and sees some random guy, he's like, hey, dude, I see you everywhere <laughs> online. That's because I got you. And it's because I got all your I shit. with you on LinkedIn, <laughs> and I follow you on Twitter and Facebook and yeah. Instagram, and I remarket to you because you've been that's to my good. site before. And because that's uh, what happens with W Promote. I'm friends with all those guys. That makes yeah, you Mike. Promote everywhere. Mike, Mike, and Mike. Yeah. Um, so I started Mike coming around the same time. But there's not a plumbing company in the United States. So you're trying that, to say I should go to them and tell you. Yeah, you should go to anybody at this point in time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'll, I'll manage them for you. But, you know, there's, there's 46,000 owners of plumbing companies in the United States that are on LinkedIn. I have about 25,000 of them. Wow. I got to get all of them. And then I follow all of them on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. If they ever come to my site, I remarket to them. So then they go over to ESPN, they're going to see my ad. And then I add all of them to my email list, which is two years worth of marketing automation. And that's how I get clients because they just call me up and they're like, I'm sick of looking at you. Why don't I just hire you? No, one guy said, if I hire you, will you go away? I said, no. Nope. I'm like, I got so much automated shit going on. I don't even know how I to can't turn get it off. You. I can't codes get you off. writing codes for codes. Yeah. <laughs> And then if you ever opt in, you know, I mean, you go straight to constant contact, which starts the two years worth of automation. And so it just, it just never ends, but let's go back to LinkedIn. So that's, that's the power of getting their email address and using LinkedIn as the platform. So that's why you were so, saying that LinkedIn's so important. Yeah. Manhattan Beach, Toyota, they want to sell cars to wealthy people. Can you search Manhattan Beach, Toyota really quick to see if they have a LinkedIn? E-O-Y. ATO? Yes. Right there, company automotive. So they have, they have 51 the, employees. They have the new, have the new um, so that's what civic, this is what civic accounts will have. Yeah, let's see how often they post. They've never posted. So, okay, so I need to take over this account. <laughs> yes. Right right away. Get, um, now, of these 51 employees, do they live here in the South oh, Bay? No. Oh, don't touch her. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, no. She's she her? Her. Can you take that off? Nope. You, you can, but it's too hard. Not the guy. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Of all the people. You can connect with Brad Sperber. But basically, you can see that they're all here in the South Bay. They work in the South Bay. They watch videos. Oh, they, know, they know Civic Couch. No, that has to be for me, right? Oh, did I send them a thing? Yes. Yeah. Civic Couch. You send them a <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we, we talked about LinkedIn. So now let's just go to you the Manhattan build our following Civic Couch. The lady that we sent the request to is it's Brad's Brad. ex-wife. They had an ugly split. Oh. They basically came in and checked the shit out. And so we, I just said, hey, you should follow him. I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's classic. I'm going to blame it. I'll blame it on my I say, hey, look, I got it. She says, hey, oh, I got a marketing guy. All right. Just went through. So LinkedIn is a ridiculously powerful platform. Let me, let me show you. There's this thing called advanced search. And this is a free account. This is not a paid account. But within my account, I get this confused here. So all filters. So that button is really important, all filters. Right. Because now, so Brad's account is easy because he only has 370, but mine's a little bit more challenging, whereas I have 25,000 LinkedIn connections. So that I have a list of 25,000 people that I, that I blast. You know, mine's a little bit, different because I have to get really good about and I've already marketed you to all my people you have to branch different yeah so I got to be a little bit creative but that's why I can come here so now I can not only search for you know obviously we want to do United States but you know greater Los Angeles but for him it's pretty easy let's just do Manhattan Beach you know people who are second degree you know what first and second and third degree connections are negative so first degree means we're already connected we're, we're first degree so second degree would be so say if you and I are not connected on LinkedIn, you're a second degree connection because we know Brad. So you're connected to him, 
I'm taking it. Third degree would be um, you get it. So you know somebody who knows somebody who knows me. That's a third degree. And then fourth degree, you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So with, you know, say for instance, my 25,000 LinkedIn connections, everybody's a second degree. So we don't even need to do third degree for Brad. Or no, we do need to do third degree, third degree for Brad because he doesn't have that many second degree connections. He only has 300 people who then know 300 people. We can't do second degree. Make sense? And now BCG, they're a big company here in Manhattan Beach, and we can designate the company that we want, Northrop. So say if we want, um, you know, so, so if you're Manhattan Beach Toyota, you want to sell cars to wealthy people, let's just do greater Los Angeles area, United States, Facebook. So, and, and this all filters that you went to, these populated because they're the most popular? Yeah, in, but I can type in anything. They're just giving us suggestions. But those suggestions are based on popularity? Yeah, probably because, yeah, City of Manhattan Beach probably has a lot of employees. Mm. And then I can click in this and then just see how many people there are. Now with Brad, we don't have to be that broad, but let's just do um, owner. So I'm gonna target Manhattan Beach, United States. I don't even need United States, but just do Manhattan Beach, Greater Los Angeles owner, you know, and business owner. So they have to have a title that they're an owner. So mm -hmm. they own something. So it's not like an 18 year old. Right. But again, I can just do city of Manhattan Beach. If you work in the city of Manhattan Beach, you don't even work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like if you work at the city of Manhattan Beach, I don't know what those people do, but they don't work. So they're a good target market. Uh, if you work at Skechers, Skechers is big, so that might, might be a good one, but Northrop. And then if I also designate Manhattan Beach, so you can get crazy. Remember our target market personas? Right. So you could fit So in. they yeah. have to be, they have to live in Manhattan Beach. They have to like surfing because interests, I can just do surfing. They have to be a second or third degree connection, which we just went over. And they have to own. They have to be a business owner or you know anything or real estate agent you know but if i just do this search so i have four search criteria not big but now i'm going to get why does it always do that now i'm going to get 2973 search results so i take a screenshot of the friend of that linkedin <laughs> so i take a screenshot of those all filters and if you were working for me it's like look I want all of the owners of plumbing companies in the United States that are owners of plumbing companies, just as, as an example. And if I get that, there's 46,000. I want every single one of those. Right. So don't come to my office ever again until you have all 46,000. So just sit and run through that list and connect to every single. Yep. So we go boom, boom. And you can personalize the message. You know, you can do all that. But we're just doing numbers. Even if we don't personalize the message, we're still going to get. So if I go through 10 pages, because there's 10 listings on this page. So if you work for me, you gotta, you gotta do 100. And so I gotta go through 10 pages of clicking this connect button. See this? So there's so 10 listings on this page, and, and I want you to get 100 of them, which is gonna get me 60 new LinkedIn connections. Guaranteed. So and you're for Brad's gonna get 60% off of. Brad's gonna be 80%. Because it's interesting content. Yeah, well, they know him. He's local. Well, they don't know Civic because that, that doesn't show Civic. He's Cal. local. Brad's like not. They're hooking really, up to me. Brad's not really selling you anything. So if I connect with the the real estate agent, which we we're going right. to do, you can call me up and be like, "Oh, let me buy you. Let me sell you a house." But Brad's not really selling anything. Yeah, so I gotta start getting they're, a whole bunch they're, of. They're start. Yeah, you're gonna get a shitload because we gotta go through ten pages. I know. And by the way, you have to shut up all your notes. No, no, no. I mean, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Yeah. Now from yeah. all these realtors. Yeah. Ready to buy a house, kind of emails. Yeah. yeah. And all the people from the city of Manhattan Beach, and all the people that work at Northrum, and every single person that works here, and we can just go up and down and support yeah. them. Yeah. But we're just going to do Manhattan Beach, and you got to connect with every single person here in Manhattan Beach. And you have right now you have two thousand nine hundred seventy-three, so that puts us out six or seven weeks before you get all those people, right. and sixty percent of them. And they're gonna, yeah, they're going to give you their email address. Right. And then we're going to go to Facebook. We're going to upload your email address. Right. We're going to go to Twitter and upload your email address. So I go, and then that, that directs me right back to that person, and then I follow them from each platform. Right. Yep. They'll see us. They'll go, oh, yeah. So LinkedIn the best way to find those emails. Yeah, so we would do LinkedIn first because then they'll, they'll recognize our name. And then when they go to Facebook and they get a thing and from LinkedIn is always the most real information. From, uh, yes, and I'm a LinkedIn although, but, guy. I built three businesses just doing this. Remember that screenshot that I showed you, the advanced filter? We just go there. 
and be like, and then you hand this off to a, a virtual assistant or you do it yourself. Or you can see that, you know, I'm just multitasking here, which I don't even know how to multitask that well, but I'm, uh, I'm on the third page and it's only been about five minutes. Yeah. And Brad, I've already built him maybe 10, 15 new connections. So it's a lot of work that, that's going into it, but we know our target market personas and we're going to be posting regularly to LinkedIn. We're going to be uploading our videos. And if you have, you know, your influencers, your community members, who have 25,000 LinkedIn yeah, connections right. like me, I'll retweet, like, share, sponsor Brad's posts, especially if it's cool. Yeah. And yeah. how many views do you think? And by the way, LinkedIn native video, just crushing it right now. Really? I'll upload to uh, so YouTube. Facebook native and LinkedIn native. Facebook native and LinkedIn, but you also have to promote your page. Yeah. So yeah, this stuff never ends, but you just need to pick and choose your, your battles. But, and you, you want to test everything. And the uh, analytics on this are, are really, really good. So I think we spend enough time on LinkedIn. You can yeah, kind of go yeah. through it. Um, you know, you can also message people, which tends to do really, really well. Try to message somebody on Twitter. Respond, you know, so you can go through this. And uh, any questions on LinkedIn? So we're not going to cover Facebook. Facebook is. Hey, really I got a new uh, plumbing company that's following. Where? The Rooter. Are you Rooter? Yeah, that's me. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, you're. Uh, Rooter. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So YouTube, I wrote an entire book on it. This is key for, for us. Yes. We, this is and there mind. is no better social media connection than you can get than you can get than a subscriber to your YouTube channel. Right. That's the holy grail that of is, anything. A is. Twitter follower means nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. Uh, a Instagram follower is good. Or no, it goes Twitter is the least, then Facebook. Then Instagram, then LinkedIn. And I, think then YouTube. Facebook, I think Facebook's about Instagram. Right. I've never even seen your stuff on Facebook. Yeah, that's true. That's it just doesn't get through the filter. Right. And on LinkedIn, you're going to get through the filter because the average person has five to 600 uh, connections. Right. And they show them in the, in the, in the, in the filter. Um, you know, Instagram, we, we, we know how to each one of these work, but Facebook's really, really hard. And, you know, you can buy likes and stuff like that. And how many people actually go over to your Facebook page? People go to your YouTube page all the time. Every single popular YouTube video and kids YouTube video that my kid watches, everybody finishes with make sure they start and finish with make sure you subscribe. Right. Subscribe and like. Yep. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell. Yeah. They all say yep. it. But even the bell is the notification. Yeah. For every new video. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And when you upload, Facebook sends an email to all of your subscribers. Hey, Brad just uploaded a video. And so it's the same process on YouTube. Whereas if you are marketing, no, you, uh, it, it, you, you have to subscribe to get the emails. I don't get emails from all my many of the people I follow. You don't have to subscribe. So I don't get emails. If I go into, if you upload right now. Yeah, I have to upload actually. Rooter Hero, that fake account that we yeah. have, will get notification. And anybody who subscribes to our channel, we get notified. See, I don't. You I get notified on that bell right there, but that, I have to look that up. Maybe you have it, have it shut off. And you don't get notified for every video. Right. But you do get notified for certain videos. I think I do see some every now. Maybe it is the bell. And they're constantly changing the stuff up and they're constantly testing it. Um, and so with your subscriptions here, you know, you can go through and just as that same process, Brad, Brad probably doesn't like it, but I'm telling you, no one really cares who you're subscribed oh, to. Oh, so I start to subscribe. So the same thing works for YouTube. Oh my God, look at this. So you type in Manhattan Beach. Right. These are all of the channels. I did a filter. You can really filter things out well here. Just show me all of the Manhattan Beach channels. So these are owners. Did I, did I type that or did I undo that? You undid it. I undid it. Sorry about that. 
So show me all of the Manhattan Beach. And by the way, you guys both know this, or you should know this. If I put it into quotes. It'll only show results when yes. those two together. Gosh. <laughs> so, so let's follow where, the police department. Where, where's the number? What number? Uh, usually there's a search results oh, number here. Oh, out of. Yeah. And then this is one of these pages that never, ever, ever ends. You, you've seen these pages before, right? Mm -hmm. Facebook so is just like, doing this, I can get over a thousand of them. I'll be able to start my job. Singapore, South Bay, man. By the way, we don't care if she only has four videos. She might follow us back. She's gonna well, she's gonna get a notification or an email. And by the way, nobody knows how to unsubscribe to those YouTube video emails, except uh, for me, somehow. Except for you. <laughs> but, no, but you got a, you know. got a notification, and you probably got an email that Ruder Hero subscribed subscribe to your channel. You did last. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm sorry. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, Lynn just got an email. So got just couch. got an email from Civic College. And she's like, oh, God damn, YouTube in my spam. And even guys that are like ninja like you. It's I just, can't keep up if I'm going to start getting so many subscribers. It's not going to go to you. It's going to me. But that's why we, we create, a, except for we create a fake account, which then has all of the social media spam going into it. Oh, shit. That's smart. Yeah. So that's the first thing we do when we do a marketing campaign because you don't want to get any of this stuff. So should I go through and change out my emails on all my, um, or just uh, start a new email? <laughs> that, we're not, that's not today's meeting. But what yeah. you do is you set a Gmail account. Then you never delete anything from that Gmail. So if I go into that Rooter Hero Gmail account, right. there's 17,000 messages in there. Right. But if they end up landing a whale of a deal with a with Manhattan Beach Toyota and they do a thirty thousand dollar a year project, I can just type in Manhattan Beach Toyota. Oh, we followed them two years ago. Oh, we subscribed to their channel. Oh, so in other words, like when I get a client, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just go into that Gmail account. I type in the client's name and I'm like, all right. So we connected with them four years ago, and then I go into constant contact. Okay, we emailed him two hundred and fifty times. <laughs> That's how he's a client. But anyway, back to YouTube, um, you just go through this and you subscribe to hundreds of these people. Like Manhattan Beach Country Club, somebody, somebody's got an email there, ABP. We know all of these accounts. And by the way, you can also run a Google AdWords account retargeting your email list to get subscribers to your channel. Like, There's no reason why you wouldn't do that. That's why we were paying one cent per view on mutation right. and that's how we got 600 subscribers in less than three months children like you know what i mean and they're, they're they're the toughest market to get or actually no moms moms of kids so you can see you just go go down through here and you know you're gonna have a lot going on in this list but who cares no one ever is really looking at your page actually i don't even think, think this this is only visible to you yeah it's just me yeah so why don't you subscribe to every single channel that's related to right. Hermosa, Manhattan, El Segundo, and you're going to see your subscribers. And that's what you do with your business account. And that's what you should be doing. And if you personally care about what you see, you just have a separate account. Yeah, you're not yeah you have your own. And yeah. You're not allowed to consume any information on any single one of these channels. Don't consume. <laughs> because sometimes Brad likes to keep it personal when it comes to these business accounts, like who to follow, how many people to follow, and stuff like that. Yeah, we, we, we just threw that out the window. <laughs> um, Very good. Yes. And then, so each one of these channels have their own analytics associated with them. So you know, knowing your YouTube analytics is also really, really good. So, and YouTube, you can kind of get really good information on who is subscribing to you. So, Brad, I'm not sure if we logged in your account here. Yeah, you're right. Um, but say if I want to uh, market to the subscribers of my YouTube channel, where is um, where do I go get to analytics? Click uh, my, I think. I think it's the. Uh, it's my channel. Uh, my channel, like the very first one. I think they renamed it Creative Studio. Oh, and you're talking about analytics. I thought yeah. you were talking about like the about page. Um, so you can get really creative with hacking YouTube. Like I said, I wrote a book on it. And you know, promoting your videos is like one aspect and then getting subscribers. But we'll leave it at that just because I want to keep today short and just go out and 
subscribe to other people. Yeah. They're going to get notified of you. You're creating brand awareness. I'd also run ads on your videos and, and your, your channel. Do that uh, through, you can go direct to, well, everything is through Google AdWords. Um, and then do we want to cover a little bit on analytics? Yeah, if you can find it. Where do I get to Creative Studio? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you want to? Oh, right here. YouTube Studio Beta. Yeah. Beta. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So this is all changed, but here you can get in and you know you can see your analytics. What what I like most about analytics is show me my keywords. So I go into analytics and I want to, this is all changed by the way. Interest, interest viewers, build an audience, earn revenue. So you can click on build an audience, you can set up ads. But here, it will tell me the keyword that, that people used that triggered the video. That would be interesting. So, so impressions and click through rate. So th this is all, this is the individual video, right? Yeah. So obviously you want to start with, you know, a successful video and so it has views. There is a spot where you can see the There's creator, creator studio classic. If that's the yeah, let's just go back to classic because it's usually on the left hand side within classic right here. So I go under overview of analytics and I click on traffic sources, which is kind of cool, right. uh, but I don't care about traffic sources. I care upon So here's where you can see your subscribers, which that's kind of cool. Let me click on traffic sources. YouTube search, that's probably the keywords that you were using. Where's YouTube search? Right, yep. So then if I click on this, so we're just drilling down. So here you can see browse. This is just like, just like Google Analytics. If I click on YouTube search, uh, Newport Beach surfing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are the, you can't see the number here, but this is probably a pretty big report which I can search on the traffic. I, well, I'm in the traffic source, but it's showing me the keyword that people are using. Right. Then I can go into the geography and the date and I can slice and dice. I'm probably looking at a small time frame here though. I'm looking at the last 28 days. Yeah, so when, when did you launch the video? So basically it's just like Google Analytics and we're not covering that in this meeting. But if I want to further optimize this video and I know that, so I, you know, I, mean, I do a lot of fishing, so my fishing videos do really, really well because how you know how to how to cook a spiny lobster. My video is not on how to cook a spiny lobster, um, but that people call you out. Oh yeah, all oh, the hate is gnarly. You know? And then I'm 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 ripping the lobster's tail off and then sticking the thing, and my hands were sore, so I'm kind of like grunting a little bit. Right. And the lobster's only this big, so. But I own it, you know? And just to give you the, uh, an example, how to, and I, don't, I have no idea what's gonna come up, but I do I know I have a video on how to prepare, prepare a spiny. Preparation, a lobster tail. That's me right here. So I'm not only coming up on Google search, but 10, I'm coming up here. 10,000 views. And by the way, I hate to say it, I think my grandmother is stronger than this guy. <laughs> Look at him. He's, 
<laughs> Dude, these, these things go on for a while. That's what, great. What does it say? Dude, go to the gym and work out. What a noise making. <laughs> Oh, like the one person they at least have a decency to kill it. Over the tail. Yeah, and, the, and the, the comments go on, but I am struggling it's because my hands are so sore. Anyway, you get the power of uh, you know, just, just using a good keyword 10,000 searches. I never promoted it at all. And what's cool is, um, you know, you can look at the history of the by the way, it goes over a plumbing website, <laughs> right? Um, but you can kind of see the graph on the <laughs> uh, I know I gotta shut this off. <laughs> Um, but you know, you could do videos and then it just comes up in, in search. And then what I did is, is I, you know, I just launched the video and then it starts coming up like hurricane waves, big waves, the wedge, Newport beach. So that video should have the title, the wedge, Newport beach, or it should have, you know, surfing Newport beach and you can just label it. Surfing and I did that. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually the so that's where you can find out the keyword and it's one of not, you know, it's only nine keywords. So wait a minute. Um, so if, if the name of that video was October 10th uh, surfing, um, could I, would I change it now and go, oh, I better change the name of this back? Oh, yeah. to, okay, so, so you could, Chasing Waves so you episode chase one, nobody's searching Chasing Waves episode one. Right. Or if they are, you already got that anyway because you have a page on your website, episode one, and they're, you know. So actually, yes, because that one doesn't say surfing Newport Beach. Newport those are my, those are my, Beach Hurricane Swell. And we know that people are searching Manhattan Beach surf videos. Well, this is a new part, right? I know, but you yeah, get the idea. Right. Manhattan Beach surf videos. So if that's not in the title, there's no way people are ever going to find it. But apparently, they are finding it, and that needs to be in the title, the description, the keywords. More people will find it. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So this should be a massive video, and probably is. I don't know how many views are on it. Yeah, we have like 1,900, 1,500. Yeah. But surfing videos are easy because there's so many people. Yeah, surfing. surfing. So all my surfing stuff. And then, wow. you know, all your videos, so you should have a Newport Beach surfing playlist because those playlists show up really high in search. And then after they go to this, they go directly to the playlist. So my, has, wait, wait, wait. So my playlist. Playlists don't be, have to be your videos. You have your videos spotted into the playlist. And if that playlist is an hour long, and they can be really popular videos on that day, all right? of the most popular videos. And then if one of my videos, because I have some Manhattan Beach surfing videos, so I, if I wanted to do well in that category, I would build a playlist, and I'd have three of my videos, and then Kelly ten of Slater Brad's. Wave pool, yep. and then Brad. Because <laughs> what happens with surfing videos is they'll put them on that screen. They'll just put a playlist on. Right. And then I go and sell that to all the local restaurants. Be like, dude, play my playlist when, you know, people are eating coffee. Throw it up on a monitor. Oh, by the way, I'll bring the monitor in. Yeah. And all you're doing is playing your playlist. And all those view counts go up it's to a certain point. But again, I wrote a book on YouTube. And YouTube's full-time marketing. But it's pretty easy stuff that you can just hand off to somebody and go to town on it. I'm going to shut this off.